Today's cocktail is the Bible Belt. The Bible Belt consists of two ounces of Jack Daniel, two ounces of sweet and lime juice, two ounces of sour mix, and one ounce of triple sec. Mix the ingredients in a shaker glass with ice, shake, and pour into a sugar frosted highball glass. Add ice if necessary and enjoy. As we always say here at Cocktails and Crankshafts, drink responsibly, and if you're so inclined, I highly recommend the Bible Belt. Welcome back to Cocktails and Crankshafts. It's your boy, the Killer Bee, the Africanized Honey Bee, the Fat Man, Car Guy Block 05 Guy, the at 05 Car on Twitter and at 05 Car now on Instagram. That's right. I'm oh. on the gram. Hey. The melodious voice you hear is my constant, sometimes when she feels like it, companion and co host, the fabulous May Flowers. What up, May? Hey, what's up? You on the gram now? Oh, snap. Let me find out you're going to be on TikTok next. Mm, <laughs> I don't think so. It's all fun and games till you start dropping it low in front of the camera. Shh. You, you ain't even lied. Okay. <laughs> So, this week, or not this week, this episode, okay, so, this episode, sorry, um, despite whatever the drink of the week is, I think it's the Bible Belt, uh, I'm sipping on a vanilla Crown Royal, so I'm a little... Oh, that sounds nice. That's better than what I'm drinking, which a is... A little slushy? Um, I need to get slushy, but I'm currently drinking a noon immunity boost drink. Wow. Okay. That's where we're at. Yeah. Um... So, I've talked about, we're talking about the Stinger today, but in a different kind of way. Um, I've talked about, in episode 7, I talked about my 2001 autocross season, where I had this awesome winning percentage, but it was interrupted by real life because I bought a house. Uh, in episode 32, we talked about 98 and 99, the early years when I first bought the car, and like my first drag racing experience, and my first autocross experience. Uh, episode 35 we talked about my 2000 autocross season which was the year when i won the big trophy and i won my club's street modified championship uh, so in this episode we are basically going to talk about what i call the dark years or as i used to call them to black. Dun, dun, dun. well no actually i used to have a cracking ass music video on youtube um i had several metallica based videos on youtube featuring the stinger um i had for whom the bell tolls like the the uh the orchestra version and oh. then i had uh fade to black the live cut and they were just really really good videos unfortunately because of copyright blah 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 blah, blah, blah one was blah, blah, blah. one was taken down and the other one was muted and then i had to like you know do the thing where you tribute the Anyway, I ended up deleting that entire YouTube page and portfolio and account, which later came back to bite me in the ass because I was that account was ready to monetize. Mm. And I dropped it altogether and had to start completely from scratch, which puts me where I am now with 13 subscribers. But hey. anywho, uh, we're going to talk about the period of time basically from 2002 till around October 2007 when I did my last HPDE in the Stinger and parked it, uh, ostensibly with the purposes of upgrading the brakes, adding a turbocharger, and replacing the safety harness, and upgrading the suspension a little bit. And then uh, real life hit me again, and we'll, we'll talk about that in another episode. But let's talk about 2002. So November 2001, I participated in my last competitive autocross, uh, the last event of the Triad Sports Car Club season in uh, at the Dixie Classic Fairgrounds in Winston Salem, North Carolina. By the way, I hear they're going to change the name of the Dixie Classic Fairgrounds because you know the word Dixie kind of has a connotation. Oh, interesting! <laughs> like they took down that Daughters of Confederate uh, whatever statue that they had in Winston Salem. It's it's a new the uh, the urban areas of North Carolina are trying to be progressive the rural areas not so much but we'll leave that alone mm -hmm. every little bit helps so it's going to get a new name even though i don't personally find the dixie classic fair name to be offensive i can understand where because eh, 
most things associated with Dixie are bring up a certain connotation. Anywho, yeah, I get it. Uh, 2002 rolls around, and you know what happened in 2002. Uh, me and she who should not be named. That's right. Uh, had that thing, and then That's we didn't thing. have that thing no more. Yeah. And we was that up. the impetus for rebuilding this engine? <laughs> That was not technically the impetus for building the engine. The engine had to be built. Um, okay. But what happened when me and Miss Thang parted ways? Uh, I bought the Blue Streak, the three, the 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 two eighty Z, that was its own episode and died a horrible death. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when that didn't work out, I accelerated work on. Uh, another project because remember I had the red and black 240SX S13s that came and went uh, another episode for another time but then eventually I got around to building the engine for the Stinger uh, because the Stinger's clutch was starting to slip and at 136,000 miles I was like eh if I gotta put in a clutch I might as well put in a whole engine because it's right. not that much more work once you've done all that and I had a hoist. I love that putting in a new energy, energy, a new engine is not that much work. Well, what I mean is, uh, I knew I was going to have to put the engine in like a year later anyway. So why not just, you know, Do I got all a, at one time. I got a detached garage. I got an engine lift. I got another car I can drive. I might as well just do the whole thing while I'm doing the thing, right? Sure. So I build this engine up and get it all because now I got some budget since I'm not getting married. Um, but I only have some budget because I'm still a new homeowner. I still have student loans. The Stinger technically, I think I was still making payments on the Stinger at that point. So there's a lot going on there and I'm buying parts. You know, the engine I got for 250 bucks plus shipping because it was in a, it was in a 240 that burned. Oh, it, okay. It had a fuel injector leak and the engine, the car caught fire. So I got the engine with all the plastic stuff on the outside melted, but the internals were all good. You know, the head wasn't warped or anything like that, but it needed an extensive rebuild, which I bought it in, I bought it in 2000. So it had been with me a few years already, but I was just buying parts slowly but surely and, you know, stripping it, disassembling it, painting it, all that kind of stuff. So I kind of accelerate the pace of the build and you know a little money here a little money there um, and in, in my case i had a i worked for a company that had a weird bonus structure but the main important thing was that the bonus was paid at the end of the year and a couple years there we hit pretty good and so i had a little extra money and then as a homeowner i was getting the, the tax refund from the uh you know the interest on my mortgage and mm -hmm. So whenever I got some money back from somebody that wasn't regular payroll, I bought some engine stuff. And slowly but surely, I got this engine built to where by uh, the spring of 2003, it was ready to go in a car. I just quite wasn't quite ready to put it in the car, but you know. Um, so summer 2003, I start buying some other things like I buy this short shift kit and I test it out in one of the Project S13s. And then since neither one of those was actually running, I just put it in the S14. And it's funny because you're in this photo right here. I was gonna say, who's June in 2003. this? 2003, yes, that's your hand and your feet. That is hilarious. Cause I was just about to ask who is in the car with you? But, Sitting and then I'm looking, the wait, the and then I'm looking, I'm like, that looks like me. That is you. Uh, and my old Nokia, <laughs> Nokia brick vintage cell phone, which was state of the art at the time. That's I mean, hilarious. oh, that is ooh, yeah. classic. So around 2004, I put in the racing seat. Although, as you can see, the interior is not gutted and the roll cage isn't there yet. I now have the seat and the harnesses and the detachable steering wheel. So that um, looks like a booster seat. It is uh, kind of like, no, it's not really like a booster seat. It is designed so that you will not eject from it in the event of a violent crash. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. We, I like to not think about those kind of things. The safety, yeah, equipment, the safety equipment is not there to be used. It's there just in case you need it. Okay. So here we go. Summer 2004. I've got the engine on the hoist. 
and it is coming out of the car and now I'm doing things like adding the front suspension power brace and all of that. So I don't have photos from when I got the engine back into the car. Mm -hmm. I know I took very detailed photos as I was removing the harnesses and sensors and clips because I was going to use that to reassemble the engine, of course. Removal started on the 18th. I got it up on the hoist on the 28th based on the date stamps on the photos because I was using a digital camera from work or that might have been, I might have had the Fuji by then. Either way, I had definitive timestamps on the photos that tell me when things were happening. Got it. Uh, So the car gets, you know, I get the engine in sometime there in late summer or early fall of 2004. And because I read too many magazines back then and got bad ideas in my head, I decided rather than pay Mako another however many dollars to turn the car all white again, so it was all the same color white once again. And I was reading uh, Sport Compact Car Magazine and they had this thing called Project Sylvia where they got a bunch of cans of Krylon flat back pa- flat black paint and uh, abused a Nissan Sylvia. So <laughs> Not abused. I did the same thing with my 240SX because the Sylvia and the 240SX are, of course, the same chassis. Uh, different names in different markets. But um, I got the bright idea to paint this car flat black and put the blue autocross rims on it because... Where was I going? There was some event I was supposed to go to that fall that I elected not to do. And I stayed home and painted the car all day instead. One well, who knew you were going to be ahead of the curve because, you know, flat matte cars are like the hot color right now. Yeah, but they do vinyl. They, that's normally done with a vinyl uh, wrap, right? No. Oh, I don't know. I think Depends it's hideous. On the car, but I know it's hideously expensive. And it's not even cute, though. No, it's, it's I don't good like on it. some cars. I don't, I don't dig it. So, uh, November 2004, I get this uh, Nissan uh, Nismo Limited Slip Differential, the clutch type. And it was hilarious because I had to take that ring gear to work and put it in a, a vice clamp at work on a big table and bring my breaker bar to break all those bolts loose. And then when it was time to retorque them with the differential, I had to do the same thing. So it took a couple of weeks to do that because I had to find time to go and work after work, after hours and all that kind of crap. It was yeah. a lot, but I got it put together and I got the backlash set properly. And to this day, it doesn't make any noise. Although realistically, even though it's been 16 years, realistically, I've only put about four or 5,000 miles on the car since then. Uh, March 2005, as you can see, the roll cage is now in. So when did I get the roll cage in and get the roof patched? Well, that happened in November 2004, even though there's no photos. Uh, I'm saying, what is this in this picture? That is just guesstimation. What is what? That's the rear. That's the rear differential from the car. Oh, okay. So March 2005, I go to Rockingham for drag racing in my newly roll caged 240SX. And I recorded video, not all the way there, but on the way back, I got video that ended up being part of that. Uh... Ooh, I had another video. What was that video called? It was the, the Justin Timberlake, Nelly remix, ACDC beat. Um... Oh. Don't say nothing, don't say something. Come on, baby, won't you run with me? Was it a Timberlake song or a Nelly song? I thought it was a Nelly song that they remixed. Mm. Maybe it was a Timberlake song, whatever. Um, anyway, it was it was Shake It. Shake It For Me. Shake It. Some stuff. I mm. don't know. I don't know. Ju- Justin Timberlake, Nelly, ACDC, Back in Black. Because that was the thing. It was a Back in Black hook. Oh, Okay. Um, I'm going to have to do some Googles. Wait, let's just do some Google here real quick. Let's do some, do some Google. Let's go on the, the YouTube. Really? Because that'll bother me. Work It. The name of the song was Work It. Hmm. 
Nelly featuring Justin Timberlake Work It ACDC Remix. Yeah, that. Oh, okay. Because that was a song I had downloaded off of LimeWire. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Yeah. Yes, I had that too. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, The car is slower than it was when it wasn't because, you know, roll cage heavy. And uh, right tires, old autocross tires were really, really, even though they were sticky when I got them, every heat cycle makes them harder. So by this and driving on them, driving on them on the road, they got really, really, really hard. So I got no traction and I got a car that's heavier than it used to be with no discernible increase in horsepower. Oh, I mean, 10 or 12, but not, you know, not a lot. Matters not. May 2005, I freshen up. Look at it. The Bam. paint job by spraying even more Krylon on the car and then wetting it and carefully sanding it with a high grit sandpaper to get it nice and smooth. Ooh. And then in August 2005, I move away to the Midwest. <laughs> Boodoo. Not much happens. It parks under, I, I have an apartment with a carport. So the, the Stinger stays parked under the carport because, oh, by the way, that patch panel in the sunroof leaks when it rains hard. Oh, no good. Um, but since there's no carpet inside anymore, it's a minor detail. Spring of 2006 rolls around. I have acquired the buzzer. And here we have a photo of the buzzer and it's look natural, at them parked next to each other. Yes, in its natural state, the Wonder Twins together for the first time. And uh, as we can see, we have a NASA schedule here for 2006, April 15th and 16th. I'm going to be at Blackhawk Farms in the buzzer, mind you, uh, to do my very first HPDE, and then I don't do another event until July, which I take the Stinger for its very first time on the racetrack. And unfortunately, that footage, the original tape there is lost, and I only have the music video version, which for YouTube purposes, Mm. I had to mute. Right. And do a fresh voiceover on it, but it is on my YouTube channel, and uh, yeah, it's a thing. So that was my 2006 season, and then... Well, no, here it is. July 21, 2006, my second HPDE. There are no photos, there is some video. Um, And as you can see here, this was originally scheduled for the 22nd and 23rd, but for whatever reason, it ended up being a three day type event. And I think I have a a AM PM problem with my camera, so I'm always like a half a day off. Mm -hmm. But I'm almost certain that I did the Saturday sessions not the Friday sessions. I think Friday was just like the social gathering Friday night. Anywho, um, April 2007. So now we're on the next season because I didn't do anything after July of 06. So April 07 and April is early, early, early spring when you live in Iowa. Right, 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 right. And of course, this was covered in episode 10, but I went to, I took the car to Iowa Speedway in Newton, Iowa. Did a, a day of HPDE there and had a good old time on the Roval configuration. And the car was great, except for the muffler fell off. I mean, who needs it? It didn't fall off on track. Actually, no, it didn't oh. fall off. The weld cracked. And, you know, vibration, metal fatigue, blah, 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 blah. Um, oh, yeah. The weld that held the muffler on cracked and it was a super trap um, which is like a glass pack type muffler it's a fiberglass uh, packing muffler with a special diffuser on the end of it anyway this thing was cracked and I was like I'm scared it's going to fall off while I'm on the road driving or something let me just go ahead and take it off so I uh, I got it off We'll, we'll just say I removed the muffler from the car and then I just had a three inch pipe from the catalytic converter to the back of the bumper, <laughs> which worked just fine. It was not as, it was not appreciably louder in that configuration because at the track, I would take all the diffusers off anyway. So um, oh, okay. the pitch changed slightly, but it wasn't really any louder, not from inside the car anyway. Um, 
moving on, we get to July 2007. And for various reasons, I take the buzzer to the track and the buzzer is now uh, primer gray because I'm in the process of oh. painting it. But I take it over to Joliet for the HPDE in the summer of 2007. Uh, the idea being to get an instructor to ride with me so I can graduate to the next group. Right. Uh, that does not happen for a variety of reasons. Uh, mostly they were just short of instructors that day and I, you know it was what it was um, but that trip is covered somewhat in episode 14 a little bit um, I talk about it as I talk about the buzzer overall in general uh, the very next weekend I'm in St. Louis at Red Lion Time Attack with the Stinger where I come in an impressive third place thanks to a well-timed rainstorm yay a third place and really i'm i'm you know i'm roughly uh, two seconds off the car second and a half off the car in front of me which is a honda s2000 with a whole lot more horsepower so i don't feel bad about what i did that day um, i was not actually on track with them oddly enough um circum situations being what they were i ended up doing my speed sessions with a Porsche 944 that was in a different category for me, but our cars were similarly similarly prepared and of similar mm -hmm. speeds. So they put us out there together, even though he was in the race car class and I was in the street car class. Uh, primary difference between our cars being that I had a license plate and he didn't. <laughs> oh, because I was going to ask, uh, you would think of that you wouldn't even be in the same remote categories, but um, okay selective interpretation of the rule book see what i read in the rule book was you can remove as much of the interior as necessary to install safety equipment mm -hmm. so the reason i didn't have a door or headliners or carpets was because i had installed the roll cage but i did still have the center console between the seats and i had a passenger seat and a license plate so this is a street car not a race car it just happens to have Got safety it. equipment in it right that's how i did that also i'm on street tires not slicks so they couldn't really argue with that that met the interpretation that met the letter of the rule book because i'm a nerd and i read rules mm -hmm. and of course that is fully covered in episode six the red line time attack st louis episode october that year rolls around and we that's are a nice picture we are back at Autobahn Country Club. And of course, I did not take this picture because as you can see, I'm in the car. The thing I don't like about this picture was that the shutter speed was too high and so it's, it freeze framed the car where if you get the shutter speed right, it'll show the wheels spinning and the background oh. will be slightly blurred in motion, but the car will be sitting still. Looking, oh, okay. But you have, you, have well, to be, I mean... you have to be a good photographer to do that. I'll just leave it at that. The thing about the digital SLR is suddenly everybody was a photographer, but not everybody took the time to learn how to be a photographer. Some people just put right. it in sports mode and press the shutter button. And let it go. Yeah. So the pictures that I donated to the message board were much better than the pictures I got back from the message board. I'll just leave it at that. But... Um, this was Autobahn Country Club, the full track, and this was covered in episode 20. And as you can see, it was uh, <clears throat> Indigenous Persons Day 2007. <laughs> and I drove the car home. On the way home, the rest of, remember I told you the muffler fell off in Iowa? And, uh, yeah. And, and, and Newton? Well, on the way home from Chicago, the rest of the exhaust system uh, fell down and started dragging on the highway. So I pulled over and cut the little rubber hangers that were holding on to it. And I cut the wire for the oxygen sensor at the back of the catalytic converter. And I left the rusty pipe there on the side of the interstate. All righty. And drove, you don't the, need that. The, drove the, the last, luckily I was one exit from home. So I drove the last six miles to the house on city streets. Well, it's a rural, it's a rural farming community. So on back roads um, with no exhaust system at all past the front of the engine. And it was loud. So what happened was my stainless steel header cracked 
right at the last oh. weld where the rest of the exhaust system was connected to it. So the catalytic converter and the rest of the three inch exhaust system, all that weight was hanging on that weld and uh, it couldn't take it and it just cracked because stainless steel is relatively ductile, but once you weld it, the weld joints tend to be quite brittle. So it broke and uh -huh. rather than bring all that back to the house with me, I just left it there by the side of the highway, put my earplugs in, drove home and I would turn it off at every stoplight because it was so ridiculously loud. Um, so I, if I got to a stoplight, I would just turn the engine off and sit there quietly until it was time to go. Oh, that is so much. And then I would crank it and drive the rest of the way home. And it was, oh my God, it was so loud. Like I was shifting the fifth gear at like 30 miles an hour because it was just so loud. But I pulled it into the garage and um, I moved it one more time that next spring because I had parked it nose in. So I backed it out and turned it around and backed it in. And that's when I started disassembling it to take the engine out again and take all four wheels off and take the suspension off and start the upgrades. And what did you do with this set of upgrades? Well, that's where I ended up not doing, you know, I got that new job mm. uh, and had to move. So I added the turbocharger to the engine. I added the new stainless steel exhaust system. I added uh, upgraded rear brakes. I added a new master cylinder and I added an intercooler, but I never did the suspension upgrades. I just put the car back together and towed it to the new house. And um, there it sat because I still needed fuel injectors fuel pump, new engine computer, spark plugs, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. There are some other things I needed to do. And because of quote unquote real life and if you recall I was on the board of a nonprofit up there. Mm -hmm. And I was in a couple of extracurricular things related to my job. And I was in some stuff related to the fraternity. And um, things just got away from me. And I, I never got yeah. back to it. And then I started grad school and then I moved back to North Carolina. So, you know, from 2008 to 2020, um, that car was basically a paperweight. Right. And then finally here a couple months ago, before I sold my house, I actually tried to start it. I got all, everything that I needed to install, installed on it, put a new battery in it and turned the key and it went wrong. But it would not fire, so um, I called a mechanic I know, had it towed to his shop, and he still has it right now. Wow. All right, well, man. He still has it at the time of this taping. I took it to him hmm, second week of December, I guess. Oh, okay. Um, and it was a cold and rainy day. That's what I remember. And I called a guy and said, come get this thing. And... Uh, the guy that owns that shop is a dude I used to work with. He left mm -hmm. the job about a, not quite a year before I did. And he started a, for lack of a better term, it's a hot rod shop. I mean, he does repairs, but mostly what he does is build people's, um, you know, for instance, he's got a BMW with a Chevy or with a Corvette engine in it. Okay. Yeah, he does a lot of that kind of stuff. So wow. he, he's got the stinger and he'll take care of it because once I moved out of the house, I no longer had uh, the location. You, you know, all my tools are in a storage unit. Right. And even though I have time, well, not really because I'm back in school now. But not really now. I would have had time over the over the holiday break, but not a location. Because it wasn't worth it to tow the car all the way to my mom's house, put one of her cars outdoors and be out there tinking around. You know, just it wasn't worth all that. Yeah, that's a lot. So he's got it. He'll get it fixed um, because what I suspect is that the fuel system is all gummed up from sitting for 12 years with old gasoline in it. Even mm. though the tank was empty, I never really drained the, the fuel lines themselves. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's There was still residual fuel in all those fuel lines. 
and the fuel filter. So it's probably just all gummed up. Anywho, that Anywho. is the story of uh, the 240 SX, my 1996 240SX, codenamed the Stinger, from the time of my last autocross to the time of my last HPBE, uh, covering roughly a five-year span. I enjoyed that car during that time, as you can see from the episodes that I've recorded based around my weekend spent driving that car around racetracks. A lot of fun right. to drive. Not terribly fast, but... Um, I guess the best way I could put it is reliable. I could drive it 250 miles, drive it around a racetrack all day, one day, drive it around a racetrack all day the next day, and then drive it 250 back home with no issues. Other than yeah, the, I mean, that's, other than the rusty exhaust system by. falling out from under it. Who needs a muffler? Exactly. <laughs> in, a, in a state where they don't have inspections, hey, you know. Thank you for watching Cocktails and Crankshafts. If you enjoy my content, please like, share, and subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell icon, and we'll see you soon with new content.